interpretation of financial statement, non current asset turnover ratio. Now, in the previous lecture, we discussed asset turnover ratio, which dealt with the total asset of the business in relation to the revenue that has been generated. In this lecture, we are only focusing on the non current asset, that is the long term asset. So, this ratio measures the sales generated from the investment made in fixed assets or non current assets. Okay. It shows the amount of sales generated in a unit of a business's non current asset. Secondly, it shows the efficiency of a business's management in using its long term investments. So, when you have long term investments in assets, that is the machinery, the building, the furniture, the computer, and what have you. Any asset that is supposed to be used for more than a year, the business must manage it in such a way that the investment that has been channeled into it will not go waste. It will come back in terms of revenue, which will further be managed well to arrive at the profit. Let's move on to look at the formula. So the formula for non-current asset turnover ratio is the net revenue divided by the non-current asset. The net revenue, as we already know, is revenue less any sales returns or discount allowed. Let's analyze the non-current asset turnover ratio. Now, the revenue generated must exceed the non-current asset value for the period. Also, a desirable rate should be 1.5 and above. Comparatively, when we measure the business's performance to that of industry players or themselves, and there is a higher rate, it can be as a result of increase in revenue. It can also be as a result of reduction in non-current asset. And here, it must be investigated whether the reduction is deliberate just to arrive at a higher ratio. When we do that and the rate for a particular year is lower than that of competitors, then it will be as a result of decrease in revenue or sales. And also, when there is an increase in the non-current assets. Let's look at certain challenges that come with non-current asset turnover ratio. The first is that the calculation is centered on revenue instead of profit. So when you dwell on revenue, manipulations are giving room. Example, credit sales being offered more than the stipulated rate instead of cash sales. And with credit sales, many businesses will come in to buy, increasing the revenue, not necessarily being channeled into cash, which the business needs to survive. Secondly, the ratio will not be useful for non-capital intensive industries such as service industries, this ratio will not mean much to them because they don't use much of assets in the activities. So when you're making a comparison, care must be taken that industries or businesses that are alike or similar are compared together. When you compare a ratio of a service industry to that of a manufacturer, the that of the service industry is going to go high and the analysis will be wrong because their asset is lower than that of the manufacturer. And lastly, Different accounting policies can affect because you're talking about non-current asset. Valuation can arrive when one is measuring at cost, the other is measuring the asset at pre-valuation model. The ratio will not be the same. Depreciation will also cause a business to have a ratio which is incomparable to others. When a business's asset structure has newer state, the net book value is going to be higher than that of a business whose assets have been depreciated over time. Let's test understanding. Now, we are looking at an extract of a statement of financial position as at 31st December 2017. So we have the assets for both years, non-current assets, inventory, receivables, and cash. Now, the revenue for the period ending 2017 is $53,000. We have to calculate and analyze the non-current asset turnover ratio for the year ending 31st December 2017. So for solution, the net asset turnover ratio formula will be restated. That is net revenue divided by non-current assets. So the ratio will be 1.45. That is achieved by dividing the revenue of 53,000 by the non-current assets only, not the total, $36,500. When we analyze this, it means that the asset was used to generate revenue more than its value, even though it fell short of the 1.5. This is something that we can still hold on to. For every $1 of non-current asset that was used, a sales revenue of 1.45 was achieved, meaning 45 cents in excess of the value of the asset. This also means that management is being efficient in a way if nothing fishy had gone on.